because I'm the Flash. The, the fastest, fastest man, man alive. alive. You told us. Did I? Let's be quick about this. The Flash rocks. I know it, you know it, he certainly knows it. Flash was one of the founding members of the DC Animated Universe's Justice League, and we eventually learned that this Flash was the Wally West version of the character. Actually, the third guy to take up the mantle in the comics after Jay Garrick, the original Flash, and Barry Allen, arguably the most famous Flash. But we never saw any Flash prior to Wally in the DCAU, and the headcanon that the Flash we saw before in Superman the Animated Series was actually Barry has been perpetual by the fan base since, well, since 1997. But was this a different person or the same Flash? And if they're both Wally, does Barry Allen exist in the DCAU at all? These are the things we're talking about today, got it? Before Justice League, other DC heroes popped up here and there on the Superman cartoon, like Green Lantern Kyle Rayner, Doctor Fate, and Aquaman. But on STAS, we never really got to explore any of their expanded worlds either. No Parallax, no Wotan, and certainly no Black Manta Sleep is the company that's bringing you this video. Superheroes wear masks, we talk about superheroes, this is so on brand for us. You've probably tried a sleep mask before, maybe you wear one every night, but likely it's one of those super slim slabs of fabric you see someone trying to get away with on a red-eye flight. It slips around your face when you roll over, it barely keeps out the light, and you'll likely wake up with it around your neck or lost inside your mattress forever. But not this wonderful work of art. Manta sleep masks are like big, super comfortable goggles. There's an easily adjustable strap around the back that holds them snug to your face while not being too tight, and these pillow-soft cups go over your eyes, which keep out like any light at all. My wife can only sleep if there's a night light of some kind on, and I'm always shoving my face into a dark crevice somewhere to blot it out, so this thing is like a new godsend. Thank you, High Father. There's also a bunch of different styles, some that are weighted, some that are like heated or cooled, and even one that connects to Bluetooth so you can play soothing sleepy sounds as you drift away or Rammstein or whatever. You just take their online quiz to find out which one's best for you. That's what I did, and I think they got it right because I have gigantic eyelashes and they ain't touching nothing inside this thing. And hey, you get to look like Cyclops while you wear them. I assume anyway, I can't see myself or anything at all when these are on. I'll have to watch the footage later and hope I look like Cyclops. I look like Cyclops, right? Manta Sleep's big thing is their pro-nap movement, bringing back the idea that stopping to take a nap isn't just for toddlers. I certainly need to join my little dude in that movement, and these are gonna help out a ton. In fact, good night. Head on over to the link in the description to get yourself a Manta sleep mask and use our code WTDB, that's Watchtower Database if every syllable is a word you see, for 10% off. Thank you Manta Sleep for sponsoring this video. Now back to the fast guy. I tried to warn him. All right, Barry Allen, will he, won't he? Well, who is he in the first place, eh? If you're not familiar, I'll give you the cliff notes. The character of The Flash first appeared in Flash Comics No. 1 in 1940, the original Jay Garrick version of the character. Fast forwarding through a couple decades of Flash and or Justice Society stories with cosplay Hermes, we come to the second Flash, the revamped Silver Age version, a quote unquote modern twist on the idea for quote unquote modern comic readers. Much like how Green Lantern went from an old dude in a cape to a super suave space cop. Just don't go looking into his relationship history. While Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman held their tentpole spots as undeniably flying off the shelves DC heroes, Flash went through a makeover and popped out on the other side in 1967 as Barry Allen, a forensic scientist who gained super speed powers after being struck by lightning in his lab. Wait, how did Jay Garrett get his powers? I've never actually looked this up. Uh, oh. No. I inhaling hard water vapors after a smoke break? What? I guess we really don't know what vaping does to you in the long term. <laughs> Be careful, kids. That's metal in your lungs. Barry Allen is basically the guy you think of when you think of The Flash. The red jumpsuit with the lightning ears and all that. About 12 years into his publication history, he got a sidekick, Kid Flash, aka Wally West. During a big, giant, crazy-ass comic book crossover in 1985 called Crisis on Infinite Earths, which was DC's first of many, oh Jesus, reboot the entire multiverse, please, Barry Allen tried to stop the big bad, the Anti-Monitor, and basically crumbled into a crispy skeleton boy and died. He didn't actually die, but we're not gonna get into that right now. Stay on target, stay on target. After this, Wally West took up the mantle of The Flash and remained so throughout the 90s and 2000s, the entire time The Flash appeared in the DC animated universe. Yes, The Flash was one of several DCAU characters to get the history combo treatment. Tim Drake was basically Jason Todd in background and Tim in name and computeriness. Kyle Rayner got Hal Jordan's origin and hair I can't help noticing. Even Supergirl was pretty much every version of Supergirl rolled into one and then some. DCAU Wally was sort of a Wally-Berry hybrid 
hybrid, but in his case, it wasn't so much that he was more one than the other, but more so that I have no idea who this is. And it didn't matter. This was just the Flash. Sure, eventually we found out in Justice League that he was indeed Wally, but look, us super geeks knew that from the get-go all the way back in the Superman cartoon. Wally West is the Scarlet Speedster from Central City. The Flash reads his official STAS biography. Well, okay, it actually it reads the the Scarlet Speedster, but you know what I mean. And then for JL, we got young, brash, and impulsive. Wally West gained the power of super speed, blah, blah, blah. Both bios call him Wally West. He was always Wally West. Let's just get that out of the way. Even the guy who wrote his first DCAU appearance says, I think in my mind, it was always uh, Wally West. We wanted him to have that sort of fun, jokey personality that would be a nice contrast to uh, Superman's Boy Scout personality. Young, brash, and impulsive, baby. Wally West. Always has been, always will be. Look, it's me. I'm here. Deal with it. Let's move on. But... Look, I get it. The fan theories about the first time we see him being Barry Allen aren't baseless necessarily. The dude has a slightly different costume and a different voice actor, Charlie Schlatter instead of Michael Rosenbaum, who's done the voice of the Barry version of The Flash in a ton of stuff since. So it's not crazy to think Wally was just The Flash in Justice League and Barry might show up sometime in a later episode to be like, hey, remember me from STAS LOL? There even was an episode idea, which you can hear the crew talk about on Justice League Unlimited special features, where they were gonna bring in Barry Allen, Hal Jordan, and Hawkman, presumably as older original versions versions of the leaguers in some capacity. Initially, we were gonna do a story with the original seven. Yes. With, from the comics that we had never done. Right, and with, then, with Hal Jordan oh, and Barry right. Allen. But while Hawkman did eventually appear, the rest of them never materialized. Unless you count Hal literally materializing in Jon Stewart's place, but stay on target! But besides the Wally West name drops in the show biographies, a change in actor has never meant a character is a completely different character. Do you think because Superman went from Tim Daly to George Newbern that this is a different Superman now? Ignore the cheekbones. Or that Robin was a different orphan every time they didn't use Matthew Valencia for whatever stupid reason? No. Same Flash. And look, if you somehow need even more evidence, just check out the early JL episode, Paradise Lost. They needed an insert shot of Flash running at the camera and they literally just reused a shot from his Superman episode. I rest my case. There was no precedent for Barry Allen Flash being in the DCAU, and there didn't have to be. But even so, the question still remains. Is Barry Allen in the DCAU anyway? Even if he's not the Flash in Superman, is he still out there somewhere? Do we have any evidence of his existence? Barry Allen, Bruce Wayne. I'm only talking about things that actually happened, not what if scenarios like this cutesy canceled lineup of DCAU Teen Titans where there's a Flash and a kid Flash because this never saw the light of day and isn't actually canon. So I'm sorry if this is the first time you're hearing about it and you're very upset now. Early commenters will be quick to comment that we do get a brief mention of Wally West having an uncle in the JLU episode Flash and Substance. My mom's gonna be there. Let's see, my uncle's flying in. Who, in classic comic continuity, is Barry Allen. Barry married Iris West, who's Wally's aunt, you see. We also got this blonde detective in The Brave and the Bold, the, the Justice League episode, not the Diedrich Bader cartoon, who goes unnamed, but he was dubbed Detective Allen by all of us overzealous nerds on the message boards back in the good old days. And then there's this blonde guy, who's Wally's boss at the crime lab in JLU, who also goes unnamed. But Wally has Barry's job. See, he's both characters rolled into one. That same episode, we get the flash museum, a museum full of Flash stuff, do I have to say it? We've done a whole video already about literally everything in this place and a few other DCAU Flash museums you might not have known existed, so just go watch that later. But there's a few Flash family-centric thingamabobs in here, most notably a kid Flash costume. I swear, yellow costumes are the bane of my existence. The only official word we've ever gotten about this was from the late, great Dwayne McDuffie, writer-producer on JLU and Static Shock. On his old forums, a fan asked for clarification on what Flashes are out there in the DCAU, and he he answered very matter-of-factly, Flash and Kid Flash exist. But I counter with, uh, what does that mean? Flash as in Wally West and a never seen Kid Flash sidekick of his? Flash as in Barry Allen with Wally West as his Kid Flash in the past? Uh, some third thing I can't think of right now but helps round out the pacing of this moment in the video? Do you think this is a problem? Well, let's roll back the rock to the dawn of time, AKA Batman the Animated Series, and browse the very earliest appearances of The Flash in any continuity to call itself the DCAU. Well, 
Actually, nobody was calling it the DCAU until like 2004 or so when fans were using the term enough that Bruce Tim and co started using it around the office. Just stay on target. Hi, it's me, James from the future, but not that far in the future. Just however long it took me to edit this video. I'm just here to announce the winner of our latest giveaway from the video about Red Robin. Yum. All this stuff on screen goes to this person. If this person is you, email us at contest at watchtowerdatabase.com with your name and mailing address. Also, psst, Pico de Gallo. You won the last batch, so email us sooner. We'll pick someone else, okay? The next giveaway is all of this stuff. And all you gotta do is leave a comment below answering our question of the day from the end of this video. Subscribe so you don't miss more giveaways every video for the foreseeable future. And hey, go check out our Patreon. Links in the description to help us get to 200 patrons so we can do a Will It Cannon episode on if Teen Titans and The Batman exist in the same universe. Need I say more? No. No, I need not. That was not staying on target, not too distant future, James. Less than a year after the premiere of BTAS, we got Superman and Batman Magazine, a short-lived publication that featured a ton of other DC Comics characters in the animated art style, all designed by DCAU tie-in media legend Ty the Guy Templeton. And you are? I'm the guy. In the final issue of this magazine, we got a story featuring Wally West Flash, which starts off in an early incarnation of the Flash Museum that displays statues of all three Flashes, Jay, Barry, and Wally. It goes on to say that, just like in Crisis on Infinite Earths in the mainstream continuity, this Barry Allen sacrificed himself to save the world, to save all of reality, really. AKA, he also fought an anti-monitor and crumbled into a crispy skeleton boy. But as time went on, and the DC animated universe flourished on our tiny, boxy, static electricity E 1990s televisions, almost everything within this magazine's pages would wind up retconned into Elder Scrolls Oblivion by the cartoons. This Flash story got knocked out of canon, and so did Wally's eventual appearances in the Adventures in the DC Universe comic a few years later, which similarly combined mainstream continuity with animated designs. This unfortunate trend continued as we moved into the DC Comics Superheroes branding era, with the likes of various coloring books starring Wally's Flash almost always accompanied by Impulse, typically a Wally sidekick from 90s comics. But that's not Kid Flash, that's Impulse. Those are two different characters. And these coloring book stories almost all got overwritten eventually too, and were like dirt level canon to begin with, so it's fine and it doesn't matter. I am working on a humongous video all about the history of this era of DCAU licensing, and it's really cool, so you'll want to subscribe and stick around for that, trust me. Where things start to get really interesting is this storybook from 1998 called The True Story of the Flash. Here, Flash is Wally again, as expected but he's bringing us through his origin story and hot damn, there's Barry Allen right there, plain as day, zipping around with Wally as his Kid Flash partner. Dude is as in the flesh as you can get as a cartoon character. He's super strong and super naked. Then, of course, Wally once again goes on to refer to how one day the Flash fought a villain who wanted to destroy the whole universe. Barry won the battle, but he lost his life. He crumbled into a crispy skeleton boy. Okay, it doesn't actually say that last part, but it might as well. This continues the narrative that the DCAU, or at least this version of it, was still tracing the continuity beats of Crisis on Infinite Earths. This book alone would be all the proof I need that Barry did exist at one point. It's the true story of the Flash, after all. If not for that Wally goes on to encounter the likes of Vandal Savage and Gorilla Grodd for the first time in completely different scenarios than the later higher tier canon cartoon, and the Flash Museum again already exists despite its grand opening in JLU. So, so far, the 90s storybooks and coloring books and animated style tie-ins of pretty much every kind all eventually proved themselves to not be the same universe as the animated series. And that's what we're trying to figure out here. Is Barry Allen a part of the cartoon continuity? Thus far, it's not looking good. Luckily, this is where we get to the real stuff, the meat and potatoes, the actual DC animated universe where anything going forward can be considered the real deal for Flash mythos. Once the Justice League show hit our staticky CRT TVs, seriously, why are these things always so staticky? Can someone please tell me? No! Everything onward was part of a new official take on the animated style Flash, who again was confirmed in the JL series finale Starcrossed to be Wally West for absolute certainty. But all the way back starting in the first season, we got more and more little drops of Flash juice, yucky, that expanded his lore ever 
so slightly. In the episodes Eclipsed and Flashpoint, not that Flashpoint, that hadn't even come out yet. Flashpoint is a word, it was clever, okay? We hear mention of a Grammy Flash. But while comic book Wally has all sorts of known family members, like his Uncle Barry, somehow a grandmother doesn't ever come up except for this one time when we learn she uh, doesn't like crickets, so we don't get to assign her any potential alias. You're no help at all, Grammy! You might be thinking there's some intriguing Barry-related clues in this sequence where Dr. Fate floats through Wally's mind in best episode ever, The Great Brain Robbery, but nope, we get the girls from the diner, some goon he's punching, the cosmic treadmill, which is pretty cool but not really relevant for this video, the key to the city award presentation from a couple episodes prior, and a bunch of beakers and vials full of chemicals, presumably referencing Wally's super speed origin, which, trust me, we'll get to. Side note, the episode hereafter, where Superman supposedly dies, is just more evidence to me that s Task Flash isn't a different guy, or else why wouldn't he have shown up to his buddy Superman's funeral, hmm? And while the comics tied into this cartoon, Justice League Adventures, gave us a lot of issues with appearances of new Flash-related characters, like, um, the reverse Flash, for one, most of these issues would again later be retconned by the shows, and therefore this comic run probably isn't canon either, rip DCAU Eobard Than. But hey, don't count them out just yet, we'll do a full Will It Canon episode on this series someday, I'm sure of it, subscribe please, okay? But the big one comes in The Brave and the Bold, the episode, where we see Wally West's super speed origin, see, here it is, in a quick flashbacky aside, viewed through the lens of Flash being mind controlled by Grodd's Tinder date. That I wish that was a joke. Wally appears to be an adult here, matching his red-headed backside from Starcrossed, which, well, we've always interpreted to mean he was never actually Kid Flash, but just Flash Flash, Adult Flash. So the Kid Flash that Dwayne McDuffie referenced must be Wally's sidekick that we never see. This guy? No, we've established that's Impulse. Those are two different characters. But let's talk about that for a second. Just how old is Wally West in Justice League? Throughout JL and JLU, you, he's constantly referred to as Kid or Hotshot or any number of other nicknames by the seemingly older and wiser members of the League, like Green Lantern or Batman or what have you. He's not always treated with the same respect as his peers, and it's implied through context that this is because of his age. Young, brash, impulsive, but not impulse. In fact, in the Justice League animated series Guidebook from 2004, Wally is described as the youngest member of the League, and Ol' McDuffie himself confirmed in another forum post that Wally is about 23 or 24. It's the same post where he says Wonder Woman is 18, but oh my goodness, we'll talk about that some other day. So he's in his early 20s in 2000 or 2001 or so on the DCAU timeline. But we've got no clue how old he was when he got his powers. Well, not to worry, my dearest database, for we've finally reached the creme de la creme de la eclair. Wait, what? Eclair means flash? What are you doing, France? Ah, the French. The word eclair translates from French to flash of lightning. Some say this is because of their sparkly glaze, while others say it refers to how quickly they are eaten in a flash. Huh. You come to Watchtower Database to learn, people. You see, the Justice League cartoon had a few tie-in novels as well, most of which were original stories, like this Hawk girl centric one where Bane wears a neat little turtleneck. Book 7, A League of His Own, tells us that Wally's origin was Midsummer, and in Book 9, Speed Trap, we learn that Wally was around 18 when he got his powers. Now, I'll toss this out there just so it gets a mention. Over the years, some fans, in an attempt to make the Flash Museum's Kid Flash costume be Wally's for sure, have theorized that this isn't actually Wally we're seeing in the Tinder Mind Control origin flashback, but actually Barry with red hair, uh, I don't know. And our Pav here is actually through Kid Wally's eyes, like he's off standing in the corner of the lab or something. This isn't typically how the story went, but it's not impossible. If Ab and Sir can give his ring to Kyle instead of Hal, anything goes. But this scenario has always felt just very unnecessary to me. Because look, if Wally was 18 when he got his powers, this could certainly be him. His character design can be a Bruce Tim style adult by that point, no problem. Just compare this guy to 18, 19 year old Dick Grayson, or even 17 year old Terry McGinnis, or equally high school aged Nelson Nash. Wait, red hair? Nash? Flash? Nelson became Flash and then time traveled back and joined the Justice League and then eventually sired the West Kid from Zeta Project because everything is canon and you can't stop me. But seriously, since we now know DCAU Wally is around the same age as, say, Nightwing, Wally being an 18-year-old kid Flash is really not beyond the realm of possibility. Master Dick was Robin when he was in college, it's fine. And like we talked about forever ago in our Who's Who in the DCAU Titans video, maybe the two of them were even on a Titans team together at some point off screen. 
So that Kid Flash costume in the museum, my creds are on it being Wally's very first costume in this universe. But <sighs> these novels, unfortunately, almost always came packaged with various continuity kerfuffles. Like, Hawk Girl can do the Aquaman fish thing with birds. She can't actually do that. That was just part of her cover story. I mean, what cover story? What do you mean? So even though in the Red Justice book, a conversation between Wally and John Jones very nicely confirms Flash's costume used to be worn by Barry Mother <laughs> Allen, it might not be canon, uh, but don't get discouraged. Look over here. Ooh, shiny. The novelization for the Justice League debut episode, Secret Origins. Regardless of anything else, this one's gotta be much more easily considered canon since it's like the book to JL's hip hop. And here, Barry Allen is mentioned by name again in the scene where the remaining heroes learn of Batman's supposed demise at the slimy hands of the Not Imperiums. The Bat's gone? As Wally West, he had worshipped Batman ever since he was a kid, tagging along with the previous Flash, Barry Allen. Barry's death had shaken young Wally to his core, but somehow he had been able to pull himself together and get on with his life. Although he'd lost his mentor, heroes such as Batman inspired Wally and helped him stay focused on his life's purpose as a superhero. Which, when you consider Flash's one and only appearance in Batman's Gotham Adventures tie-in comic a little over a year prior is a really sweet sentiment, but Target staying on with version after version of the DCAU committing to Wally having once been the sidekick of Barry Allen, the previous Flash, who's gone now, dead even, crispy as f <laughs> The continuity that actually means a damn thing still trying to push this narrative just puts it into perspective for me. Barry's gotta have been a thing, right? But nobody ever talks about him. What was he ever up to? Why do we never hear about any of his adventures? Enter Capstone Publishing. Since 2009 or so, literally hundreds of kid-oriented storybooks drawn in the familiar DC animated universe art style have been released, including a conservative handful of Flash-titled books where Flash is, well, always Barry Allen. These came out right around the time that Barry was reintroduced back into the comics as the primary Flash, so it makes sense that any animated style stuff would want to be synergistic. And in a pretty fun way, these books act like almost a window into the missing adventures of this older Flash that we never knew. Or at least they would if not for the fact that some sort of non-canon nature befalls every single one of them, be it appearances of villains with wildly different origins and costumes than their animated counterparts, or the fact that we get a Kid Flash sidekick, but he's named Bart? Like Bart Allen? Wait, Kid Flash and Impulse are the same character? What is reality? Is this Kid Flash now? And come on, man, these books had no excuse. The cartoons had been out and over with for years. They had every opportunity to stick to the established canon and follow the rules. So I guess it just goes to show that these capstone books too belong to a separate universe or universes or whatever. Their history simply is not the same as the one we saw on our static ETVs. We'll go through all these books eventually, but not now. Despite that speed bump, we can still piece everything here together into a clearer picture, and to me anyway, this is what I think we can assume. In the DC animated universe, Barry Allen was the Flash after all at some point a while ago. Maybe before and or during Batman the Animated Series if that helps keep your brain happy about it all. Then in midsummer of around 1995 or 96, really not too long before Superman the Animated Series, Wally West got his own super speed powers and became Barry's sidekick, Kid Flash. One day, theoretically not super long after that, Barry died in some kind of big, unknown off-screen thing, and Wally took up the role of Big Kid Flash, appearing in STAS and throughout JL and JLU. The, um... End. Now, how Barry got his powers in this continuity, we have no idea. A DCAU style how to draw book from 2015 did give us this origin. Forensic scientist Barry Allen was working in his lab. Late one night. When a powerful bolt of lightning shot through a window. The lightning destroyed a chemical cabinet, soaking Barry in electrified chemicals. Shortly after the accident, Barry discovered he could move at supersonic speeds. The capstone books provide an identical origin, and this is basically always how Barry gets his powers in every every version of the character. So we can assume it was relatively the same in the DCAU, and it doesn't matter that this is essentially describing Wally's Tinder dream as well, because the two of them also have identical lab lightning origins pretty much every time anyway. Any of this ringing a bell? 
What? It all actually works out pretty smoothly, even though I hate that it's entirely off-camera hearsay. We don't see Barry ever, but I feel pretty good about saying that he was there. My name is Barry Allen, and I'm not in the DCAU. I am in the DCAU. My name is Barry Allen, and I'm in the DCAU. This is a very multi-layered joke, and I'm not sorry. And who knows, had that JLU episode with Barry and Hal actually come to fruition, if it would have followed this pretty well-hidden through line or completely bungled everything. I mean, I trust the writers of these shows, but have you seen our videos? There's confusing oversights like this all over the place, I promise. I wish we could see it all go down someday, but for now, at least we've got this JLU Mattel action figure that looks a hell of a lot more like Barry than Wally, even though he's only called The Flash anywhere on the box, and the old double WB Studio stores used to carry these animated style prints for a bit, one of which showcased a very berry looking flash, what with the open eye holes and the little ear wings, and all of which I wish I owned, oh my god. There's also this DCAU Barry Allen character design by Gotham Adventures artist Tim Levins, which he actually redid after we annoyed him enough that his original Barry looked too Wally E. And technically, this flash art on the walls of the Super Babes restaurant in Batman and Harley Quinn is of Barry, just like this is Hal Jordan, because these are straight out of 70s DC merch style guides, but who knows if it's literally Barry or like an artistic interpretation of Wally. Man, the Super Babes wallpaper really redirects our timelining efforts more often than I'd care to admit. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention how, a couple years back, we got Barry Allen teaming up with Terry McGinnis Batman in the Rebirth era Batman Beyond comic written by Dan Jurgens. But although it's pretty dang neato to see these two side by side, this was the same futuristic Barry from the currently running Rebirth Flash comics, and that Beyond title pulled continuity from every source imaginable, so it's doubtful we can count this. Not the same continuity, but it's still pretty cool. I like his beard. He's like fast Santa Claus. So to bring all of this to a close, wait, what's that? You're shouting into the void, but what about Jay Garrick, James? His helmet's in the Flash Museum too, you dingus. Well, while I don't know how I can hear your void shouting, I'll give you a quick rundown on that since I'm here and it's topical enough. That helmet? McDuffie says you only think it's Jay Garrick's because you know of Jay Garrick. It could be anyone's helmet. Could have stolen it off the actual Hermes even. He's chummy with Wonder Woman. He can't say he's not. Strike one against Jay's existence. We got the Justice Guild in the episode Legends who were doppelganger replacements for the Justice Society. There's been a rumor floating around for years that this was what the episode was originally going to look like, but me oh my, we got to talk about that in a different video. The JGA existed in comics in the League's reality, much like the original J. Barry crossover that introduced the multiverse in DC. Since the streak was that world's Flash, basically Jay Garrick in a motorcycle helmet, it's kind of implied streak is the equivalent of Jay in this continuity. Strike two against his existence. And in the Justice League Unlimited comics, Jay did appear in a single issue, noted to be the first original Flash with Wally as the second, but he also appeared as a cameo in JL Adventures number 20 as one of many alternate universes visible only to the shattered mind of the psycho pirate. So maybe JLUJ came from this alternate universe in an off-screen story, or he exists in both like an Earth 1, Earth 2 situation? The very DCAU inspired Earth 12 set comics that ran throughout the early 2010s continue this idea of it going J then Wally with no Barry in between, but we also see a ton of other Flash related heroes and villains we never saw elsewhere, and we've already done a whole Will It Cannon episode on Earth-12 that proves it's a different continuity than the cartoons. So, strike three? I don't know. Maybe Jay Garrick was Flash at one point too, before Wally and Barry. Or maybe this is someone else's helmet, like something Wally wore for a second before realizing it didn't go with the kid Flash costume at all. Maybe that's why the top of his mask is missing. James, stay on target! I'll just leave all of that up to you to decide. In the end, perhaps that uncle that Wally mentions is indeed Barry Allen. Or it's not, and it's just some uncle. This detective guy is just a blonde detective, and the Central City Crime Lab dude, while looking a heck of a lot like how the Capstone books portray Barry, is also just some guy. They can't be Barry, they're not crispy, crumbly boy skeletons. But knowing with much greater certainty than I did half an hour ago that Barry did very likely exist in the DCAU, but is is dead and gone now somehow, what do you think happened to him? Did he and Retcon Thon have some big fight that erased them both from history? Did some version of Crisis on Infinite Earths happen within the DCAU? Are there pre-crisis and post-crisis versions of this animated universe? Does that explain the art style change and Joker's face and a thousand other things? Well, as an anti-matter of fact, I've had that on my video topic to-do list nearly as long as this video, so... My question of the day to you fine folks is as follows. 
Avengers. Do you like the idea of Barry Allen being an unseen part of the DCAU's history? Or would you prefer Wally West to be the only Flash? If there's one thing I learned in the process, writer Derek Friedolph said about his work in the Beyond Era Flash stories, is that the fans of the Flash, in any timeline or universe, are pretty fanatical. Mike drop, Mr. Friedolfs. Personally, I think it's really neat that Barry may very well have been out there at some point, but if I'm being honest, I've always been much more of a Wally -E fan. I'm a 90s kid. I like 90s eclair, what can I say? Thank you for watching this video. Thank you again to Manta Sleep for sponsoring it. And thank you for buying this new t-shirt we just made. I saved the multiverse and all I got was being crumbled into a crispy skeleton boy. Yes, this is real and you know you want it. Our Teespring store is linked below. And thank you as always to our beautiful Patreon supporters who truly do wonders to help out us data buds over here on a regular basis. Lots of cool new exclusive stuff we've been posting over there lately, so check it out. We really couldn't do it without you all, especially our top patrons, Sean McAllister, Luke Mears, Mystic Angel, and Jonathan Andrew Brantley. Also, hey, please go watch our last video all about the DCEU timeline. It's very much worth your time, I promise. Even if you don't give a damn about those movies, you will not regret it. It is an experience. It'll change your life. I play the saxophone in it. Okay, bye.